So the other day, Limited Run Games had a presentation where they showcased a bunch of projects they're working on, games, you know, partnerships, all that kind of stuff. And I wasn't home during the day. I was out with the family, and I did not catch this live, and I still haven't watched the whole presentation. I just went to their YouTube page, kind of scrubbed through some of the newest videos they put up, because people were hitting me up. Did you see that there's a new Tomba? I was, I was like, what? Are you serious? I love Tomba. What is this? I got to dig into it, right? So I found this on their page. It was part of their presentation. I'm not going to play their video. Um, it looks like the Tomba one is just the opening cinematic type of thing. Uh, but, I, man, one of my all-time favorite PlayStation 1 games. I remember when this game came out, I played the crap out of it. It blew me away, you know. With it, it, It's like a side-scroller over the head, you know, platforming action role-playing elements whole story going on the, the quests that you're doing all sorts of different missions it was just so you know involved i, I was fascinated by this game and i liked uh tomba here you know i was like man i'm gonna dye my hair pink but no that never happened probably never will but i was fascinated by this game loved it i love the first one more so than the second one but after scrubbing through the uh, limited run games page, I came across that they announced Clock Tower as well. And I noticed something um, between all these games that they're announcing. I don't I don't really pay attention to limited run games. I'm not a limited run games fan. I don't order from them. I've been frustrated with them in the past for numerous reasons. And I really don't pay close attention to them. That's just, you know, that that's just the way it is. I mean, I don't. I just don't pay attention, but sometimes they do announce some cool stuff that piques my interest and this stuff piqued my interest, but looking at clock tower, um, and Tomba, I noticed how they're talking about carbon engine, that these things are coming through because of the carbon engine. I'm, I'm not, honestly, I was not familiar with the carbon engine. What is that? Right? So I, I did go to their website to see what this all entails. And we'll circle back to this in a moment. Cause it is kind of interesting, but you know, going back to the Tomba video and the, the clock tower video, you know, reading the description, like Tomba says that they're working with the creator Takoro Fujiwara to bring the beloved platformer to modern consoles via the carbon engine with a new soundtrack by the legendary Fujita Harumi. She worked on the original game. The only reason I know that is because I live streamed the game before and some random company who put together a compilation of music tried claiming music from the Tomba game. And I looked up all this information. And I was like, nah, this ain't right. And I, you know, counter claim them and it, it all got worked out in the end. But yeah, so a new soundtrack working with the, uh, uh, the creator. Interesting. And then when you go to the clock tower video, I don't know what it says in the uh, description. But it's collaboration between Capcom, Sunsoft, WayForward, and Limited Run to revive the Super Famicom game uh, to new modern audiences. And in the video, scrubbing through it, I saw where they were talking about making these like cutscenes and drawing the characters and stuff like that. And, and I was just like, okay, this is when I was like, I need to look into what the Carbon Engine actually is. Like, is this just a re-release being emulated? Or is this something that they're remastering? Now, like, you know, because, hey, new soundtrack, working with the original creator. Now, when you look at the Carbon Engine, it's, they say it's a development tool that allows legacy content to be ported to modern platforms. So given, like, games a second wind, it's the core component of Limited Run's vision for a world that is forever physical. I don't know. I, I guess, right? But there's a lot of information here. I'm not going to read everything, but they say it's a multi-platform development tool that helps bring uh, different emulators interfaces to interface with modern hardware it uses emulation as a base on top of which the carbon engine builds features like ui rendering audio data management controller inputs and console specific stk features like trophies so i'm thinking like retro art type of deal but you know more specific with certain things i guess because uh, yeah i mean if it's emulation as the base you're bringing the game over using emulation and the software behind it to provide enhancements, extra features, change the audio. Maybe there's, you know, copyright issues as far as who owns what, especially with Tomba. Um, you know, so, hey, we, we need to get a whole new soundtrack for the game and, you know, implement that into that. And then, you know, the Carbon Engine allows them to inject all those things. Maybe new, uh, you know, features like UI. Like, you know, the original game it was for the P PS1. So, 
button prompts, stuff like that would be based off the PS1. So I guess they could use this to change that for console specific button prompts, things like that. So it says, furthermore, the carbon engine seeks to create a perfectly accurate experience for the play. I don't know what that means. Perfectly accurate. Like you're just, you're emulating it, but then you're changing things, adding things, injecting cutscenes. I, I don't know. Uh, creating a true carbon copy of the original game they played long ago and allowing new players to play games as intended by the developers. Okay, so if you're a developer, you could, you know, contact them if you got some retro games you want to get in there, right? But they, they have some more information here. I, I see where they talked about some games that were shipped with the carbon engine and how it was utilized, like River City Girl Zero. I've never played that game. Uh, I'm familiar, I'm, you know, I'm familiar with it, just never played it, but it was localized. They put manga style cinematics in there and anime intro sequence, you know, stuff like that. And these are the systems that, you know, the Carbon Engine supports, NES, Super Nintendo, Genesis, Game Boy, all the Game Boys, Game Gear Master System, and then Sega CD and PlayStation. Uh, and obviously it says, it says coming soon, but Tomba PlayStation game. So at first my, my excitement was like, oh, they're remastering this. That's what I thought. But now, after reading all this, it's like, no, they're not remastering it. They're just porting it to new consoles. I, am I extremely excited for that? Yes and no. Now, hear me out. This is just more of a discussion. You know, not even planned. Just thinking about this stuff. I could play Tomba. I own it physically. I love the game. One of my favorite games. Uh, but I've also played it like in the PlayStation Classic. I've emulated it on my PC. And I, I always see this discussion in my comments on videos, especially recently when uh, like the Nintendo Direct where they announced Mario RPG and I was excited. And I'd seen some people like, hey, this is ridiculous. Like that's all they do is just bring out remakes. But I'll see some of the same people say like they'll, they'll justify emulating. We're not given access. This library of games doesn't exist outside of... Uh, buying old cartridges or discs and having the original hardware. These companies don't care. They don't want to give us access. And then when companies do give access or they remaster a game or they re-release it in its original form, you'll see some of those people like, nah, hell no. Nah. This, you know, but remastering, remaking, re-releasing is something in my opinion, as long as that's not the only thing a console has. No, no console that's out is just inundated with re-releases. I think it's cool. I think it's awesome to revisit a game from the past, maybe with some quality of life improvements, a fresh coat of paint like Mario RPG. That's amazing to me. You don't like it, you skip it. If you like the Switch, there's freaking thousands of other games on there that are not re-releases. So this, I'm, I'm intrigued, but then at the same time, it's like, I don't really care for Limited Run. Um, if they were, they're supposed to release this stuff physical, uh, I know it's under the limited run label. I'm not like boycotting them or anything. I just don't really care to buy stuff from them and not know if I'm going to get the game in six months, a year, two years, or if they're going to forget about me, you know, among other issues with them. So it'd be like, yeah, if they sell it at Best Buy, maybe I'll grab it, have it in my collection. Tomba is an expensive game. Clock Tower is an awesome game. And to have it officially translated and have a physical copy of it's kind of cool, kind of cool. So, yeah, I mean, either emulate these games, play them how you want, or, hey, play them on new consoles. Doesn't matter to me, but I am curious to hear what you guys think on this kind of stuff. It's intriguing. Like Limited Run, hate them, whatever. It is kind of cool that they're bringing this stuff back, even if it's just emulation with a, uh, you know, this software behind it that can implement certain changes or features. I think it's kind of neat, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. Bye.